What? You never seen a guy wear his dad's T-ball coaching shirt from 1989? <laughs> it's time to learn coffee and TV. I was surprised to find out that only one person had requested this, and his name is, I'm going to put an emphasis or two on the wrong syllable, I'm sure. His name is Saul Pantoja. So here we go. No one's allowed to watch this video but him. I'm not going to lie, this was really, really hard to figure out, and I tabbed it out for myself as much for you, so, <laughs> so you should go get it on my website, ryanlent.com slash show notes. It is 100% free, no strings attached, but there is one thing you have to know. The title, so that no ne'er-do-wells can horn in on our super secret information, is in super secret backwards code. The opposite of coffee, of course, is NyQuil, and the opposite of sitting around watching TV is doing a 100-meter dash. So you're looking for NyQuil and 100-meter dash. Sounds like a winning combination. Reminds me of my third birthday party. All right, the first thing we got to get down is this strumming pattern. Let's get our first chord going. It's going to be E7 with your middle finger, A6 with your pointer finger, and I like my pinky finger for G8. You might like your ring finger, but either way, it doesn't matter. What you're going to do is go down, up, up, down, up, and the is accomplished by not squeezing anymore. So I'm touching all the strings, but I'm not squeezing, so... They don't make any noise. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And that is your strumming pattern. If you're looking at the tab, which you should be, you'll notice that I put in parentheses a chord name for reference. It's not necessarily exactly what the chord is called, but it'll be helpful for talking about it. This first chord is a B. It's got a root B. It's got the major third D sharp. You'll recognize that from like when you play G, right? That's what that shape is. So it's like a G shaped B, uh, root third and another D sharp. So it's a B with one root and two thirds. We're gonna do that for two measures and you're gonna wanna bend the G string a little bit in there. And then we're going to A, sorta kinda, but that's a good enough thing to call it. It's gonna be E5. A4 and G5. This is a pretty crazy sounding chord. It's got a root A, a major third C sharp, and a minor third C, so that's really wacky. But here we go. B. And then we're going to do some octave chords. It's going to be A9 and G11. Down two frets to seven nine, at which point we're gonna play G just the way we just played B, so three, two, and four on E, A, G. And then this awesome F chord, it's an E shape, but one fret higher. And here's a special B flat chord, it's gonna be E6, A5, and B6. And then regular old D flat or C sharp as the horrible bar chord that nobody wants to play. A4, D, G, B, 6. So here we go. Let's see if I can do that whole thing very slowly for my sake. Here we go. You'll notice if you use your pinky finger, your pinky finger kind of gets to stay on the G string the whole time, and that's why I like it, even though that's a little scrunched. But then I'm right in position with these two fingers, which is the fingers I like to use to do octave chords. And then G, pinky finger is kind of the whole anchor here. So, yeah, but you can use your ring finger if you want. So that is the intro and the first half of the verse. The second half of the verse is exactly the same, except when we get to that D flat. Instead of doing that last measure, we're going to the line that says last line of verse instead of D flat. So you'll be special F, special B flat. And then we're going F shaped A. We want B5, G6, D7, open A string. And then there's a little guitar lick, and I believe this to be what it is. I could have sat there and listened for another year and a half and maybe come up to a slightly different conclusion um, in so far as how many strings are involved and when, but this is a, a great guess anyways. And then I'm gonna show you how I like to do it. It's gonna be D and G4, up to six, 
and then D7, B7. And when we reach nine, I definitely hear that G string. Ninth fret, so D, G, and B9. But I just like the D string by itself, four to six. And then the two notes on the D and the B string, seven, nine. I think that's kind of silly enough to be up my alley. So from special F, B flat, and then A. And that brings us to the chorus. Which begins with regular old C sharp minor, A4, D6, G6, B5, five, six, seven, eight, to our B chord, the one we've been doing the whole time. And then we got some octave chords on a little walk down. A string, 14th fret. The G string will, of course, move along in kind. 14, 12, 11, 7. So here's the first line of the chorus. C sharp minor. B. Octave row. The second line of the chorus starts out with a C sharp minor like object, but he didn't want the B string fifth fret, he wanted the seventh fret, so some things had to be sacrificed, and we're just gonna do A4, D6, and B7. And now we're gonna do some octave chords that are very difficult for me to navigate because we're involving the B string, and when you involve the B string, your shape goes from this, like on the A and the G strings, to this to achieve octaves, and we're gonna do D6, B9, down two frets to D4, B7, all the way up to 9, 12, down to 5, 8, and then we play that B chord we've been playing the whole time. So here we go, I'm gonna try the second line of the chorus. do the whole chorus again, but in truth, the second time through the chorus, the C sharp minor normal is not C sharp minor normal. It's our C sharp minor like object. You have my blessing to do either one. They both sound great. And when you get to that B, the last measure of the chorus, it's not there. So after your octave run, you're going to do to D. And you can play D however you want. He uses the bar chord and A. And at the end of the A, you can do A, B flat as we slide into our B to go back to the beginning of the verse. The bass does that, the guitar does not. I think it's fun. And that just leaves one piece of the song left, the end. So you'll be at the end of your chorus, you'll be in your D. And A. You can do the flat into the end now and it's gonna be this is kind of silly because it's six measures long the phrase silly is the wrong word fun is a better word here B two three four five six seven eight D two three four five six seven eight A two three four five six seven repeat B two measures of B two measures of D two measures of A repeat 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 in a giant loop and you've done it. And we've done it. <laughs> that was thrilling. I kept feeling this whole time like my guitar was out of tune. It's almost just like the song kind of wants to be out of tune. It marches to the beat of its own drum, so to speak, and I think that's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I will see you next time with more NyQuil. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>